Welcome to the University of California, San Francisco Sports Medicine Podcast, featuring Dr. Nira Fundia, Dr. Brian Feely, and Dr. Drew Lansdowne, discussing hot topics in sports medicine and society. We hope you enjoy our podcast and look forward to hearing from you. All right, great. Um, welcome everyone to our UCSF Sports Medicine Podcast, six to eight weeks with myself, Dr. Nira Fundia, Dr. Brian Feely, and Dr. Drew Lansdowne. Today, we have the pleasure of uh, having Dr. Amit Atre, who will be talking to us about uh, many of the things he is doing in the orthopedic area, which are very exciting and very cutting edge. Um, and we're excited to have him join us. So once again, thank you for joining us, Amit. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Um, absolutely. Um, one of the first questions we have just for our audience, just because I think everyone likes to know everyone's backstory, what, what initially got you interested in orthopedic surg surgery and how did you get to the point where you are today? Um, I think everyone's story is pretty different, but, but mine may be echoed across many of you. I worked for a guy in my first intern job, so we call them house jobs in the UK. Um, and he was pretty inspirational. I like the way that we, we, he managed to get patients better in a very quick manner. Just the re return to recovery uh, and the return to a quality of life that people wanted to do, he was achieving it. And I thought, it's just a great way of, of practicing medicine. You know, I've, I'd done an internship in medicine beforehand, internal medicine. I felt we were just tinkering with medicines, just changing the pills around and not really seeing some dramatic changes. So in ortho, it's such a privilege. We get to fix a broken bone and they leave the hospital. They come in with a damaged arthritic joint. They get to leave the hospital walking pain-free almost. It's, it's, it's a privilege. And then um, Amit, you're practicing in Canada and uh, for maybe those listening, can you just go through some of the differences um, between practice there versus United States? Yeah. So, I mean, this is a, a political can of worms that I don't really want to open up, but we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a universal healthcare system across the whole of Canada. Uh, Quebec is, is, is marginally different. They, they have the option of, of private work as well, but it's pretty minimal. Um, but throughout Canada, it's a universal health system. So everybody gets uh, the same treatment, whether you're a, a multi-billionaire or, or a pauper. Uh, we're kind of proud of the fact you get the same health care. Now, what it means is if you need something, you're going to get it and you're going to get it for free. You, I mean, via taxes, of course, and our taxes are pretty high. Um, but, but that's the socialist system that we live in. Um, but there's no one that doesn't get treatment. And, and that's the big difference, I think, between the US and, and Canada. And when I watch people on Twitter like yourself, uh, Nero, you know, there's lots of frustration with, with co-pays and, and insurance companies and who gets what treatment. And it, it must be incredibly frustrating because you're the physician trying to do the very best for the patient. I guess in Canada, we just make the decision and we get it done. There's very little limitation on that. The downside, of course, is that we have wait times. So if someone comes to see you in clinic, they probably get their surgery within a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a month if you're extremely busy. Uh, my wait list varies between 12 months to, and sometimes 24 months for, for hip, hip and knee arthroplasty. So that, that bit's a bit of a tragedy, but we're working towards that. How do you feel in terms of, you know, one of the things we deal with is patient, patient complaints in terms of like how, you know, how functioning they should be or, or what's problematic. So a lot of times patients will come in and say, look, I've got this big sporting event, I can't have this little meniscus tear, or I've got a little bit of arthritis, you know, I need an arthroplasty. Do you feel that the patient population in general, there is more uh, understanding of discomfort or decreased function as opposed to theoretically what we may have here? No, I think humans are humans. There's that great paper from Chloe Scott from Edinburgh that showed waiting for arthroplasty was like a fate worse than death. She did the EQ5D analysis. So it's terrible. It's, it's totally unacceptable. Um, and COVID unfortunately pushed things back by another eight months, which I know is, is not dissimilar in certain parts of the US. Uh, and, but we'll work through it. And, and, I, and I don't see a universal healthcare system in some form leaving Canada. So we're not hardier. I think, oh, I don't know. I'm not a true Canadian, I'm an, I'm an immigrant. Um, but, but I mean, Canadians are super tough, you know, especially those farming Canadians who come in with, I'm sure it's the same in the US, the farmers turn up with, severe arthritis and ligaments that should have been repaired years ago and, and they just seem to get through it but you know it, it's not a good system yeah i think orthopedic surgeons in the u.s are kind of the um, northern canadian farmers we're just inherently tougher than everybody else <laughs> <laughs> um one of the reasons we wanted to bring you on is that you've created a really different and interesting educational website 
Um, can you describe a little bit about what it is and what made you decide to do it? Uh, yeah, so there's a long story behind it. And I think um, when I was at med school, I, I really found a girl really attractive. I really fancied her and she was doing astrophysics at the time. So she said, you know, if you're interested and, you know, maybe we can talk about it, perhaps you can read this book. And she gave me a brief history of time, which was Stephen Hawking's book. Uh, and I got to page nine, I think, before I fell asleep and I never touched it again. And she and I never got together. And, you know, it was a sad story. Um, but then about 12, maybe 15 years later, my wife and I, different lady, my wife and I, and I chose better. My wife and I were watching the BBC and there was a TV program called The Wonders of the Universe, which was presented by a guy called Brian Cox. Now he's a, uh, he was a pop star originally, but he became a professor of astrophysics. It's in, in Manchester University in the UK. And the BBC gave him millions of dollars to go ahead and produce this TV program where he'd talk about the origins of life, uh, the Big Bang Theory, black holes, and those sort of things. But he used storytelling and he told he used animation to make the, the sun appear, and then the planets would revolve around his hand as he talked about it. It was just beautiful. And I thought we have the technology and we have the ability and the filmmaking skills to do this. Why don't we do this in orthopedics? Why don't we do it in medical education? So in 29, and, and I spoke to my chair about it, um, Peter Ferguson, and, and that's one of the differences between training in the UK and Europe and training in North America is that, you know, I love the US and I love Canada. If you go with a project to your chair, he or she will say, go ahead, do it, find a way to do it. So Peter Ferguson said, raise the two, $3 million you need, just go and find it. So we, we toured around the US, we met with the big four companies, so Stryker, ZB, Smith and & Nephew, and Depew, Johnson Johnson, and we, we pitched the idea to them, or I pitched the idea to them, and they were very supportive. And um, I really hoped that it could be an altruistic thing, and perhaps each company could donate half a million towards this project and could, you know, it'd be something altruistic that we can give to the whole world. Uh, and, and in fact, most of the companies don't want to share that kind of IP. So, so it ended up that, that one company just showed the most commitment to us and, and they were very supportive. And so we went with them. They gave us a, a $2 million um, educational grant. And then we went away and made, wonders of the universe for orthopedics. So that's that that's the that's the history behind it. Nice. Um, that's such a cool project. And who would you say is the primary target audience? Are you trying to reach students, residents? Um, like who's the what you're trying to reach? Yeah, so it's aimed primarily at residents. So we try and build, so I don't know if you've had a chance to see any of the chapters, but on the hip side, the hip arthroplasty, which we've launched already, we start very basic. We talk about the biomechanics and and the, some of the osteology. And then as we get towards the end of the uh, module, we're talking about revision hips and Poprosky. And I actually got to interview Wayne Poprosky and talk about some of his tips and tricks. So that's really aimed towards um, board exams. Uh, so so the, it sort of builds upon itself. But we've had a ton of feedback from med students as well. Um, so med students with even a passing interest in surgery or even specifically in orthopedics have been watching it and, and loving it. it it's some of the feedback we're getting is that people are being drawn towards our specialty, which it, for me is it's a really touching and, and honorable thing. So I'm pleased about that. Um, for fellows, I think it kind of helps as well. And, you know, there are some attendings that have been emailing the, the website to say that they found uh, some of the information really useful. And if not, just to explain to patients. So, so that's one of the keys that I've been really proud of. Great. And then, you know, obviously the videos are very technically well put together, you know, more than just what we all do off our iPhones or computers. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the technical part of things? Like, do you have a, you know, an art producer or someone else with Educast? Like, how does it, how does it all come together on the back end? Yeah. So I was, I was very lucky, Narav. I, um, one of my friends works in film production. So she, she, wow. she produced a, a, um, an Emmy winning show called Orphan Black. Um, and she put me in touch with her digital arm of her film production company, which is called Triton. Um, and I was blessed or lucky to have met with a guy called Bryce Hunter, who's now become a partner and, and, and co-owner with myself and my wife of Educast. So the three of us have, 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 um, have developed a team around us. So 
he is the producer, he's a director, we have a director of photography, and then we farm out all the animation to, um, to uh, another uh, supplementary animation studio. So we, we've got third parties, but our own film production company as well. Um, you, you know, you, you guys know this in your team, you kind of surround yourself by a good team and it, it leads to a good product. And we, we've been lucky in that our director of, of photography is phenomenal. She's also an amazing editor and she kind of just makes that makes me look good just because she takes out the Fs and the Ss all the way through filming and makes it look very, very slick. So just out of curiosity, did you have a background, for those people who haven't seen it, you almost look like an actor doing this. Would, do you have a, almost, almost. Do you have a background in um, doing anything on stage or were you, are you naturally um, inclined to do these sort of things? Oh, no to both of those. I feel incredibly uncomfortable speaking, even now on this Zoom. I, I'm not that you guys are making me feel very welcome, so thank you. But it's just it's not a comfortable thing for me. Um, neither public speaking nor 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 being in front of a camera, um, and it, it really comes down to good editing. It really make honestly, it can make anyone look good. Even my partner Amir appears on the anatomy uh, and uh, approaches chapter, and he's terrible, but they make him look good. <laughs> And so right now it looks like you have, I think, hip and knee arthroplasty or hip and knee primarily up there. Uh, what do you see as kind of next phases and where the project is going? So we've filmed 43 chapters already. So um, yeah, so uh, shoulder is, <laughs> shoulders with legal at the moment because the legal team find lots of things that we've said on camera uh, worrisome, uh, even though it's been through legal twice already, but now all of a sudden. So legal will be coming out in the next week or two. I keep promising it, it's been pushed back and back, but within a couple of weeks, we'll have all of shoulders up, which is six modules. So um, the anatomy of the shoulder, I think it's radiology and taking images and CT scans, uh, and then three on arthroplasty and one on uh, fractures of the shoulder. Um, and then we have sports medicine, which will, uh, which will interest you guys. So we have six chapters on, on um, sports and uh, trauma is another six chapters and then foot and ankle is as we just filmed foot and ankle so it's in the can and it'll go to animation which is the longest and hardest part of the whole process so just out of curiosity how do you fit sports medicine just into six chapters i mean we convinced the fellow that it's like a 200 chapter um episode of their life i, I don't think it's that important brian i just don't think <laughs> It's difficult, it's difficult. So we have a finite budget and um, you know, we can have to spread it around. Um, and you're right, you know, I, I'm a hip and knee guy. So of course my hip and knee arthroplasty chapters have taken up 18, 18 <laughs> chapters of our 50 budget, of our 43 budget, sorry, but, but it's just the way it is. And, and, and if I had more money and as, 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 as the, Drew's question, where are we going to next? You know, we, we hope we'll get more money. We'll raise more money from our sponsors and from philanthropy. Uh, and maybe even we, we may consider charging. I, I mean, I love the fact that it's free right now, but maybe in a few years time, we'll have to start charging. Um, and, and we'll wait for feedback from, from the viewers as to whether we should or, or should not. But if it means we make more videos, then maybe we do. I don't know. Do you see this as something that'll expand outside orthopedic surgery? I mean... You did kind of mention the Breaking Bad where you're just mixing pills together and uh, changing medications, but could you see this expanding through the company or through other private groups to include other surgical fields? Yeah, absolutely. So that's what we're working on right now. So I'm, I'm in the stages of raising capital again um, with, with ca uh, cardiac, first of all, then cardiothoracics, uh, oncology, um, and probably rheumatology. And that's something that I don't have to, to write the scripts. And that's the most choresome part, as I'm sure you can imagine. Writing 43 scripts has been, been a labor of love. It's been, it's been difficult. I had to separate time from family, which uh, has been killer for me for the last two years. But the pandemic sort of helped a little bit with that. Um, but I can be a little bit more hands off and my partner and I can just oversee most of that kind of stuff. But as long as we raise the capital, the other, so that's the, from the medical point of view, the other arm of this is, and, and, and Brian, this was, this was born from the fact that I'm a bad student and I was a bad resident. 
because it's hard. I mean, some of the stuff that we go through is just conceptually very, very hard. And the books that we had, when you and I, I'm sure Brian, you and I are a similar age, when, when you and I were students, we had Miller, which is a phenomenal book, but if you can't sleep, it's the best sleeping aid in the world. It's just <laughs> bullet point after bullet point. And if you're in the right mood, it's unbelievable. But if you're not, it, it's difficult. So this was born from the fact that um, I needed help. Some of these concepts need animation. And what you can, you know, that, that phrase, in a, a picture paints a thousand words. Well, if you throw animation, it just paints a million words. So my next um, plan really is to try and tackle high school um, science. So my kids are getting to that age. And what we'd like to do is, is something similar to the Khan Academy, but the Khan Academy is very basic. It's a, it's a guy who writes on a chalkboard essentially, which is nothing new. He just does it really well. But if we can talk through kids science and, and uh, teen science and make it interesting and make it something that they can follow and be passionate about, you know, we can get more kids from um, disenfranchised groups, more women interested in science. So. That's another avenue we'd like to like to explore. Yeah, that's amazing. I, you know, it's funny. I remember, gosh, it was probably about five, no, six, seven years ago, and one of our residents um, was going in with one of our, um, one of my colleagues, and he asked her, "Well, what did you do to prepare for this?" And she, I went on YouTube and I watched a bunch of videos, and he was aghast that he that she wasn't reading, and she very honestly said, "I can't figure out how to operate." by reading a book if it's not your technique. And long story short, she did not get to do much of the case with that attending, um, but she's right. Like that ability to, for especially visual learners, to be able to see rather than read. And I always thought that was one of the hardest things of surgical training was to read a book written by somebody else, have a semi-random technique thrown at you and then expect to know the nuances of how a faculty person who's done a thousand cases, two thousand cases, would be doing it. Yeah, and the critique of orthocast is God. It's basic. It must be so basic. But you know, you can't build on on those difficult concepts of double bundle unless you know what the ACL does. You need to know that it does have uh, two bands. You need to know what each one does individually. So you start from the basics and then build up to that second chapter where we might talk about whether a single bundle is better than a double bundle. You know. It's all about building up. And children, my kids just watch TikTok and, and Instagram and they learn from Instagram and TikTok. It's not just stupid dances. So, so the way that you, the three of us, the, the four of us learned is entirely different to how the generation below us learned. And we just got to come to terms with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, I mean, this is awesome. This is very insightful and, and great to hear about your kind of journey and what you have kind of coming forward, um, maybe for our audience one more time before we wrap up, kind of tell us where they can find, um, you know, the, the project you're working on, where to find you on social media, just stuff we can share with our audience. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, and it's about the only social media I have, and I'm hipdoc75. Um, but everyone can go ahead and watch all the videos on uh, www.educast.org. So it's educast.org. And it's just simple registration, no costs, and it's, it's free for everyone to watch. So please spread the words. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, once again, thank you be, uh, very much on behalf of all of us for, for sharing your work. And um, we look forward to seeing everything grow uh, over the next several years. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the time.